Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And bang! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. As a parent, would you fail your own child? You may be doing just that by ignoring the serious problems that our schools face today. Overcrowding to the point where students must share desks and books, attend only half-day sessions, not enough teachers. With the school population growing by a million every year, what will a situation be in ten years? Realizing that these educational problems must be solved, President Eisenhower has called for a White House conference on education to be held in November. As a citizen, as a parent, it's up to you to join your community's efforts toward better schools. Start today by writing for free information on how to hold a community conference. Write Better Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York 36, New York. Remember, better schools build better communities. This message is brought to you as a public service. Hank Williams, the factor of the Northwest Company trading post on Lake Kusaya, was talking with Miyaku, the chief of the neighboring Indian village. When the door to the living quarters at the rear of the store opened, Jane, Hank's daughter, called to her father. Dad? Yes? Do you hear a noise outside? What sort of noise? Well, as if someone were moaning. Oh, it's just the wind. We'll have a blizzard before long. It sounds exactly as if someone were moaning. I don't hear anything. I'm going to take a look outside. There. But didn't you hear it then? Yes. <laughs> Around the corner. It's a man lying in the snow. It's Indian, isn't you? Right? Oh, it's Metka. He's been shot. We'll carry him inside. Uh. A wounded Indian was carried inside the trading post and placed on a cot. As soon as Hank examined him, he realized that nothing could be done. I'm afraid he's a good me, Aku. Metka, good boy. Huh? He's trying to speak. Tormani Raku. No lenta mania. Tormani. Cree, Raku. Gormanone. Polo. Dantic. A Cree? Did he say a Cree, Ah, uh, that's right. Cree who wear mask on face. Menu. Indian from south. Cree shoot at Silat Metka. Silat dead. Manitou Lupin. And go sorry, Factor. What about me? Didn't he say Factor? Ah. Silat Metka have furs, then bring you. The Cree Indians shot at them and stole their furs, is that it? Ah. Where did it happen? Donore Monta. Pola. Lamune. Not far. On trail near Big Pine. Dead Pine. The one that was hit by lightning last summer. Ah. Uh, That's only about a mile from here. Dad, I, I think he's gone. Yes. Yeah. Covering with a blanket. Metka Silat. Good boy. We'll find Silat's body and then start looking for the murder. I'll harness my team. Hush! 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 
The storm broke as Hank and Miyaku left the trading post. By the time they reached the big pine, the whirling snow had covered all the tracks around Seelot's body. He was placed on the sled, and the factor and the Indian chief drove on to the south, hoping to pick up some sign of the killer. Finally, Hank stopped the team. Oh, there. Oh, 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 there. He pointed to the opening of a cave just ahead of him. That smoke coming from the cave. Someone's built a fire inside it. Ah, that's right. We'll leave the team here. That's a slip by the opening. Dogs buried in the snow. Door catch killer. Him make camp. Yes. We stay behind this tree. That's a good idea. Come out of there with your hands up. Don't shoot. You heard what I said. Come out of there with your hands up. Yes. My hands are up. As Hank and Miyaku waited for their guns ready, a young Indian stepped into the open. His pocket was open and the men could see the beadwork on his buckskin shirt. He's a tree, all right. This way. Shalu is not a bad Indian. He is a friend to white men. He's young to be a killer. I have killed no one. Come over here. Just take a look at the man on this sled. Did you ever see him before? He's dead. Yes, but that shouldn't surprise you. See if the fur is on his sled, Ah. Uh. You're a Cree, aren't you? Yes. My name is Kalu. My home is far to the south. I go to the mission school. What are you doing up here? I am looking for my lead, George. Someone stole it. So that's your story, huh? It isn't good enough, Carlo. One of the men you shot lived long enough to get to the post. He said it was a Cree who held him up. And you are the only Cree in this neck of the woods. I have done nothing wrong. There are no furs on flesh. Maybe him hide them. We'll look for them later. Get your team harness, Kalu. We're taking you back to the post. I have done nothing wrong. We're expecting a Northwest Mother policeman. He'll get the truth out of him. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Are you kids there? Are you seeing the exciting homers that your home team makes? Win or lose, there's nothing like the fun of a baseball game. The hot dogs, the popcorn, seeing star players in person. Come out to the ball game now as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, Muffet shredded wheat, Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult relative and see a wonderful major or minor league baseball game free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Remember, the more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now to continue. The young Indian was taken back to the post and locked in one of the travelers' cabins. The factor's daughter talked with him for a long time that afternoon. And when she returned to the store... Dad, hmm? when do you expect the sergeant? Well, he's due tonight. Of course, it may be someone else making the patrol this month. Oh, I hope he comes. If he doesn't, couldn't we bring Kalu over here tonight? That, that murdering tree? Let him sleep under the same roof with you and me? Absolutely no. But he isn't safe in that cabin. Well, of course he's safe. There's a good lock on the door. Well, I don't mean that there's any chance of his getting away. I'm afraid the Indians from the village will break the lock from the outside. Tanya says there'll be a funeral ceremony tonight. And you know what such things can lead to. Oh, I'm afraid the Indians will break into the cabin. Miyako knows that he must wait for the Northwest Mountain. Well, after it's all over, Miyako will say that he couldn't stop his men. He may not even try. Oh, Dad, you can't let any harm come to that boy before the sergeant gets here. <laughs> you talk as if you were on the killer's side. Well, I don't believe he's guilty. Of course he's guilty, dear. You heard Metka say it was the Cree who shot him? Yes, I heard him all right. There is another Cree within a hundred miles of here. But you can't be sure. You stopped looking when you found him. Well, if there is another, he'll be found. Yaku and his men are searching the forest for the stolen furs. 
But he's been on the trail a month, losing it, picking it up again. Well, he's gone through any number of hardships, and all because he loves his dog so much. I just can't believe a boy like that could kill a man. Look. Bioku, you look. We find stolen fur. Good work, Bioku. Where? Zatak find them. Near cave where Cree make camp. You hear that, Jim? I guess that proves he's guilty. If he's guilty, I've never been so mistaken about anyone in my life. Sergeant, come. What's that? Ah, snow stop. Me see him come across lake. There's another fellow with him. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, come on. Let's make him work him. The man with the sergeant was Constable Downey, who was to take over the patrolling of the lake district. It was getting dark as they drove up and time for supper. So it was while they ate, the sergeant learned the details of the double murder and Kalu's capture. After supper, the sergeant and the constable went to the cabin where the Indian boy was being held prisoner. And after questioning him, they returned to the post. Well, sergeant, did you get a confession out of him? No, and all the evidence is circumstantial, Hank. I don't like to make up my mind too quickly in a case like this. Did he tell you about his dog? Yes, he did. A big gray husky with white marks. Oh, he'd love that dog. What have you? As far as I'm concerned, it's a great point in his favor. But it isn't evidence. Metka says a Cree killed him. Jane heard him. Yalku heard him. I heard him. And we have the word of a dying man that this Kalu is guilty. Hmm. I will hold a hearing tomorrow morning at the Indian village. Matter, King, too warm in here for you? I'll let him out. Oh, he's tugging at your pocket. Want me to come with you, boy? <laughs> he sure does. Sergeant, our cook says that the Indians may try to break into that cabin and kill Kalu tonight. Oh. King's worried about something outside. Come on, Jim. Look, Indians all around the cabin. Come on. As the sergeant and the constable ran toward the cabin with their guns drawn, the Indians saw them, and most of them ran for the woods. But the door of the cabin had been broken open, and one of them pushed his way inside. He had a knife in his hand. Now, just to kill you, no. Raccoon! The Indian slashed at Kalu with his knife, but the boy caught his wrist and tried to twist the weapon from the older man's grasp. They fell to the floor and rolled over and over, the man with the knife trying to drive it home, the boy struggling desperately for his life. The blade was forced closer and closer to his heart. And then suddenly, the older Indian was pulled to his feet. That's enough. Give me that knife. Got him, King. You been hurt, Kalu? No. Point of nice scratch hand, but uh, that all. We'll see it's taken care of. You, what's your name? Me, Chatak. What's the meaning of this? Uh, didn't the Aku warn you this man must be left alone until the time for his trial? Uh, and why didn't you obey him? Metka, Silat, good friend to Jatak. This man kill him. Indian law say man who kill must die. So does the Crown's law. But first, there must be a trial. You've done a bad thing, Jatak. He'll have to be punished. There are other cabins. Have we locked them up in one of them? No, we'd better get this whole thing settled right now. We'll take both of them over to the Indian village and hold court tonight. Hank Williams and his daughter accompanied the sergeant, the constable, and their prisoners to the Indian village. There were hostile mutterings when the members of the tribe saw that Jatak was a prisoner. But Miyaku greeted the sergeant with great ceremony and ushered the party into his own lodge, a large, well-built log cabin. The sergeant took up the question of Jatak's punishment first. Miyaku... You were warned by the factor that any attempt to take the law into your own hands would be punished. Miyako not know that young brave go to post. You should have known. But since the Crown's laws are new to your people, I'm going to make allowances. Jatak won't have to go to jail, but he must pay a fine. How much? One dozen fox pelts. Him not have any. Him not trap. How does he make his living? I'll explain, Sergeant. Jatak is a great hunter. Ordinarily, he provides the village with most of its meat. Well, what do you mean, ordinarily? He's been away. That's interesting. Where? Well, up north, I think. Ah, uh, that's right. Him bring back many dogs. Dogs? Ah. Him kill much caribou up north. Sell to Indian for dogs. Sell dogs to Indians here for food, money. Come here, Carlo. Yes, Sergeant. You say that someone stole your lead dog about a month ago? Yes, Sergeant. And you trailed the thief all the way up here? I learned on the trail an Indian with many dogs had gone on before me. How about it, Jata? Did you steal Kalu's dog? No. Describe him, Kalu. He is gray, with a white chest. He is almost as big as your king. Did Jata bring back any dog that answers that description, Miyako? Uh, him have dog like that, but him killer. A killer? Him plenty bad. My dog, Mogo, 
was a good dog. He was no killer. This dog work in harness all right. But when him not work, Jatok have to chain him. Where? In lodge where Jatok live. Take us there, Miyaku. I want Kalu to see this dog. When the sergeant and the others reached the lodge where the hunter lived, they heard a savage growl. When the door was opened, the great husky strained at the chain that held him, baring his teeth and snarling at the sergeant. He bore the marks of many beatings, raw welts around his head and shoulders. His eyes were red with hate. You see him plenty bad. I see. Come in, Carlo. Is this your dog? Sergeant, what have they done to him? This is your dog. Yes. It's Mogo. I'll show you he's my dog. Don't go near him, Kalu. He's savage. He will recognize me. He doesn't, though. Mogo. It is Kalu. Oh, you remember me, don't you? Mogo. Good dog. Good dog. You see? You see how glad he is to see me? Mogo. Mogo, boy. Mogo. That's good enough for me, Carlo. You've proved he's your dog. He isn't bad, but he was never beaten before. You see what this means, Miyako? Jatak lied to you. He found the dogs he brought back here down in the Cree country. He stole them. Ah. Constable, take Jatak back to Miyako's lodge. Right. And the rest of you, Miyako, Hank, and Jane, you wait there for me, too. You may tell your braves to build their council fire, Miyaku. We'll be ready to start with the murder trail in ten minutes. Uh, come along, Jatak. Okay. Please, Sergeant. May I stay here with Mogo? Or take him with me? If I leave I him... I want I'll... you to stay here, Kalu. I have a few more questions. The sergeant questioned the young Indian closely about his movements that afternoon. Kalu's story couldn't be shaken. He had been no closer to the trading post than the cave where the factor had found him. You don't believe I killed those two men, do you, Sergeant? No, I don't. But unless it can be proved to the satisfaction of the tribe, we'll be in for plenty of trouble. Uh, one of the men who died said it was a Cree who shot him. I am the only Cree Indian. Yes, that's what makes the job difficult. Still, there may be something in this cabin here that'll help. We'll see. King watched his master search the cabin. He had no idea what he was looking for, of course. But he knew he was looking for something. And as always, the great dog wanted to help. That was why he began to sniff around the cabin. The floor was of dirt, hard packed. And King's investigations took him to the farthest corner from the door. Here, the dirt wasn't hard packed. And King began to dig. (laughs) There was something buried here. And King intended to bring it to the sergeant's attention. The flying dirt was enough to bring the sergeant to the dog's side. What is it, King? What have you found, boy? Let me see. Good work, King. Good work. Take a look at this, Kalu. Look what King's found. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, which would you rather do? Read about your favorite baseball team in the papers, or see a game on the screen, or be right in the ballpark? Yelling for the players on your team, eating hot dogs, drinking soda pop, and having the time of your life. Golly, nothing beats the fun of the ballpark. Come out to the game now as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate without paying a cent if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult relative. You can now get a free baseball ticket right inside a package of Quaker Pop wheat or Quaker Pop rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get in on the fun. Right away, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Bring the whole family to the ball game. You'll all have a picnic. Now to continue. The council fire burned high. The tribe chanted as they took their places around it. Miyaku sat in the place of honor with a rifle across his knees. The sergeant sat beside him. And Jatak and Kalu stood facing them. The chief raised his hand in a signal for silence. Now, sergeant, you start trial. Very well, Miyaku. 
First, I'll call on you for your testimony. What did Metka say as he was dying? Him say Cree shoot him. <laughs> Make them keep quiet, Mr. Ah! I want you to tell us everything Metka said. Ah. Metka still us drive through forest with plenty furs to sell at post. Them here shot. Them see Indian who wear buckskin with plenty beadwork like Cree wear. Him shoot again. Silat kill. Metka run away, but him wounded. Get to post. Die there after factor. Me find him. Hank, what did you do after Metka died? Well, we went into the forest and found Silat's body. Then we drove on and found this young Cree hiding in a cave. Listen, your chief has more to tell you. What's that? Tell them about Kalu's dog. That not have nothing to do with murder. Tell them, Chief. Ah. Jata tell us lie when him come back here. Him not go north. Him go south to Cree country. Steal dog there. <laughs> Bad dog him keep in lodge belong Kalu. You know dog. Him bite anyone come close. Miyako has seen this boy go to dog. Put hand on head. Dog not bite. Dog belong Kalu. Jatak stole it. Ah. Well, that wasn't the only thing he stole in the Cree country. I want to show you something that I found buried in his lodge. Let's have it, Jim. Here. Yeah. Look, everyone, a beaded buckskin shirt. Yeah. If you saw a man wearing this shirt, you'd say he was a Cree, wouldn't you? Yeah. Me not wear it, sir. Why did you bury it? Me not wear it. You answer, Sergeant. Why you bury shirt? That's not true. Sergeant, not tell lie. Him find it in your lot. You take word of white devil. Ah, uh, Sergeant, good man. Him always tell truth. Him friend to Indian. Him always try help Indian. Him tell lie. It's you who lie. You buried the shirt because you wore the shirt this afternoon when you ambushed Metka and Selah. Uh, you meant to steal their furs, and you did steal them. But when Kalu was found in the cave, you wanted him to be convicted of the murders. It was Jatak who found the furs near the cave, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, was anyone with him when he found them? Uh, no. He took them from where he'd hidden them and placed them near the cave. Uh, and tonight, Jatak, it was you who led the raid on the cabin at the post. You wanted to kill Kalu before he had a chance to convince people he was telling the truth. That his dog had been stolen. That you had stolen it. That you'd been down in the Cree country instead of up north. No, no. Yako has here enough. <laughs> it was you who killed your brother Metka, your brother Silas. You died. <laughs> the killer screamed with rage as he dashed straight at the chief. He pulled the chief's rifle from his grasp and leveled it at his temple. The sergeant's hand was on his gun, but the berserk Indian's next word stopped his draw. Jatak will not die. It's true, him killed Metka and Silas. Now, Miyako, die if anyone make move. You, Redcoats. Go down your guns. Better do as he says, Jim. Right. Now, what do you intend to do, Jatak? Me take your guns. Let go. He shoot the first man who come after me. You seem to have the upper hand. I don't see how we can stop you. No. Me kill anybody who tries to stop me. Not move anybody. Me kill. The Indian started backing away from the console fire, and no one made a move. The sergeant spoke quietly to King. Get him, King. <laughs> King heard the command and meant to obey it. But he knew better than to make a direct attack on a man with a gun in his hand. He slipped away from the sergeant's side and out of the circle of light cast by the console fire. Jatak continued his backward course, his eyes riveted on the sergeant and Constable Downey. He reached the chief's lodge, edged his way to the corner, backed around it, and then turned to run. But King was waiting for him there. The Indian was knocked to the ground, and the sergeant went into action. Before the renegade could fight free of King, the sergeant had wrenched the weapons he carried from his grasp. All right, boy, let him up. On your feet. Better handcuff him. Right. That's good. Now you take him to jail, sergeant. Yes, Miyako. We'll tell the judge in White Horse what he's done, and he'll pay for his crime. That's good. And, sergeant, I can take Mogo and go home. There's no charge against you, Kalu. Miyako, sorry him think bad thing about you. It's not your fault. Miyako, plenty glad sergeant come here. Not let Miyako make bad mistake. You'll see that the dogs Jatak stole are returned to the Crees? Ah, and we send present to... With Kalu, show Miyako's people live by law. That means you'll live in peace and that this case is closed.
Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The warm weather and long daylight hours mean more fun out of doors, especially for the younger members of the family. But sometimes it's not possible to be outside, or it's important to relax and sit quietly for a little while. Then is the time to tune to Mutual. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, there are programs of imaginative entertainment that bring all of the adventure and excitement of the wide open spaces. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon, member of the famed Northwest Mounted Police, braves the dangers of a wild and lawless territory in the days when gold was king. With his faithful dog, Yukon King, Sergeant Preston is a challenging example of courage and daring. And following Sergeant Preston every day, Monday through Friday, is Bobby Benson. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, the doors open wide on a whole world of adventure with Sergeant Preston of the Yukon and Bobby Benson, both on mutual over most of these stations. Because of a chance meeting on the boat from the States, Sergeant Preston became interested in a young couple heading for Selkirk. Later, he discovered they were being victimized and their lives endangered by crooks. Preston went to their cabin to help them. Jane, this whole thing is a fraud. You have no right butting in. Uh, what is this, Sergeant? We don't understand. You and your wife might both have been murdered if you did what they told you. Jane, I'm here. To... Sergeant, are you badly hurt? A shot through the window caught Sergeant Preston unawares. Was he injured too badly to prevent the crooks from going through with their plans? Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The delicious cereals shot from guns. <laughs> By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. And directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. America.